Now, one of the things people ask me all the time, whether I'm giving a seminar, whether I'm giving a webinar, whether I'm meeting new traders, anywhere we, I go, what will the price be tomorrow? Will it be higher? Will it be lower? Should I buy? Should I sell? Well, you know what? I don't have a Ouija board and nobody else does. Nobody can predict where price is going to be. So if you're attending this class and it helps that technical analysis, especially using moving, moving averages, hasn't answered these questions, I'm afraid I have to disappoint you. It doesn't. However, if you're attending this webinar with the hopes that moving averages will improve your trading, I have good news for you. That it surely will. Now, moving averages help traders make effective transactions by aiding them in evaluating the price history of a currency pair or an investment. More specifically, these averages make it easier for investors to interpret the basic fluctuations of an asset by smoothing out the random movement. Okay, that's a lot of words. <clears throat> now, the fact is, because a moving average is a very simple calculation, many traders just ignore it. It's one of the first technical indicators anybody learns. What's the moving average of gold? Well, if gold is trading at $1,500 right now, an ounce, and last hour I traded, say we're looking at a one hour chart, last hour is 1,500, the hour before that was closed to 1,500, the hour before that and the hour before, we would take all those closes and we're using it, say we've selected to use a 10 period moving average, we would take the last 10 closes, add them together, divide them by 10, in this case, and that would give us $1,500, which would be the moving average of gold. It also would say if gold 15 periods ago was at $1,500, then it jumped to $1,575, fell down to $1,425, moved back to $1,500. We add them all together, they would still, it happens to be, they'll all add together to $1,500, give you the same $1,500. So that gives us a very simple line on our charts. Problem is that simple moving average really doesn't take into account price movement that's more current. And so we've come up with a couple of different types of moving averages to help this ease because a moving average falls in a category that we call lagging indicator. Okay. Now it's not like you're in school and your, kid, your teacher calls you and tells you that your kid's lagging behind the class. No, lagging and leading indicators, one's not bad and one's not good. Doesn't make a difference. A lagging indicator tells you what already happened in the market or a leading indicator predicts what might happen in the market. Now, when you have an indicator, whether it's a simple moving average or a complex involved statistical analytic tool using standard deviation, <coughs> excuse me, there's only five pieces of information that you can use, five mathematical pieces of information. There's the open, the high, the low, and the close and volume. So every indicator uses these. Now how the, what mathematical formula, what statistical formula is applied to it then is based on the indicator, but these are the only grounded pieces of information you have. So let's go quickly over, look at a live chart. So what we're looking at is just what we're talking about. Now we're looking at a 10 period moving average. And this is the blue line that I've dropped on the charts already. So it takes some of the noise out of the markets. It gives us a easier to see representation of where price has been but that's all that it does. Now, there is a 
maybe we'll call it a simple strategy that's been around forever. It's called red light, green light. <clears throat> Means you would only consider taking a buy position when price was above the moving average. You'd only consider taking a sell position when price is below the moving average. Okay. Simplistic. But to be honest with you, I wouldn't use the trading strategy, but I would use it in my decision making because I don't want to trade against the movement or the momentum of the markets. But this is very simple. And this is a basic moving average. Now, before we go on to how we might want to use these or incorporate them, I'm going to give you a disclaimer. Today, we have these beautiful HTML charts. They're developed by these outstanding, incredible developers. But guess what? These developers are not traders. So they think their job is to give us so many choices that we get lost in them. So the rule of thumb for all of my trading days is a standard moving average is the close of the session whether you're using a 10 period, a five period, a one day moving average, a one week, it's always the close. Okay. Nobody would ever think of doing anything different, except today, these developers have given us things like, we can use the open, the high, the low, the close. We can use the high and the low times two, or divided by two. We can use the high, the low, and the close divided by all of these synthetic ways of calculating a moving average. The fact is, doesn't make a difference. It just gives us more choices. And then it gives us all these gurus out there that'll tell you they have this incredible trading system that uses a moving average based on something else. Believe me, I promise you, just use the clothes. Okay. Now, We've got a simple moving average. <clears throat> That's all we got at this point. Now, in this case, from our example for class, we're using a 10 period moving average. Now, the period that you use your moving average for is very personal. It depends on your trading, what chart you're looking at, what assets you're trading, you know, whether you want to go and use. an eight period is completely up to you. There's some indicators that have bases like MACD uses a 12 and a 26, but you can adjust and there's all kinds of trading strategies that would say use hypothetically a 10, a 20 and a 30 period moving average. They're either up to the indicator, they're up to strategy, and they're always up to you. I, as a person, I stay pretty much for this 10 period moving average. Now, on this chart right now, we have the blue line, which is a 10 period moving average. I've already set it up, so I'm gonna drop it on the chart for you. Is here is now a 20 period moving average. They're both what we call simple moving averages. Simple because they go back that many periods, add them together, divide it, and put a dot on your charts. Now, these two moving averages, whether you're using a 10, 20, whether you're using a 5 and a 9, whether you're using a 7 and a 14, whatever combination you're using, is simply called a moving average crossover strategy. So you could make trading decisions based on when. The, the smaller moving average crosses the larger moving average at the crossovers. Or you could use these for other interpretations of the market. Now, I even know somebody who's got a strategy that <clears throat> is developed and calls this dead man's land. They'll never make a trade when price is between their moving average gap. So they say 
that it must be above one or below one, depending whether you're buying or selling. Again, that's a customized, personalized strategy. But this is also the basics from MACD, because MACD uses a 12 period and a 26 period moving average, and then measures the distance between the two moving averages and charts it below. But again, as I mentioned, a moving average has one problem, and it's lagging, and it has significant lag. And traders on a whole don't like lag. So some genius traders or some genius mathematicians came up with another way or another formula for moving averages. Because what we have a problem with or an issue with is if gold was trading at 1,500 10 periods ago, dropped the 1,425, went back to 1,500, then traded to 1,500 for the next eight periods, then this period dropped down or went all the way up to 1,525. When you added them together, you still got 15,000 divided by 10, you ended up with 1,500. And what happened was it didn't take any important information from the last trading period, which that last trading period happened to, to jump up a great deal. And what do we want to do? We always want more weight put on the most current period. Because we're less concerned with what the price did 10 periods ago and more concerned with what the price did just now or most recently. So what was developed was called an EMA, Exponential Moving Average. And this Exponential Moving Average gives more weight to the most current time frame. It's a little bit more involved calculation because it applies, like I said, a weighted period to the most recent trading periods. Now, the line I just dropped on your chart, actually, let's make it a better color so it's more clear for you. Let's make it an orange instead of a purple. Actually, let's make it bright yellow. Well, not bright enough that you can see it, but let's make it orange. Okay, so the orange moving average line on the chart is the weighted moving average for the EMA for the same 10 periods. And as you can see, it is a little bit more reactionary than the simple moving average. So now we have something that is less lagging and more leading. It's a little bit more forward. But because we don't use these moving averages for many things, except for some general information, is it all that important? Well, it's somewhat important because there's also strategies out there based on the crossovers of the EMA and the SMA. Okay. Also, if you're gonna use a multi moving average strategy, you say using a 10, 20, or 30. Again, you're then looking at the fan here of the three moving averages. And if you're using EMAs, they give you a little bit more forward thinking information. So we have SMAs and we have EMAs. Most indicators on our charts today have been recalculated to use EMAs. Now, like I said, the mathematical calculation is a little bit more difficult, but you never have to calculate anything by hand. So it's not all that important that it's a little bit harder. 
for you to calculate it. So calculating the EMA is a bit more complicated as this indicator gives greater weight to the more recent values in order to reduce the effect of lag. So what it does, it takes its multiplier. The multiplier is two divided by the number of time periods. So if you're looking at a 10 period or 10 day or 10 week moving average, it's two divided by 10 plus one. So for the 10 day or 10 period EMA, it's two divided by 10 plus one, which gives you 18%. Okay. If you're using a 20 period moving average, it's 9.52%. And then you take that multiplier and apply it to the most recent time frame, and then go back to the nine previous time frames and come up with your average. So it's given you a little bit better in piece of information. And look, trading is all about edges. If you can get a little bit better edge by using something a little bit more mathematically advanced, so an exponential moving average puts more emphasis on the current price. As you can see right here on this chart. Now, I'm not gonna go into them tonight because there's many different moving averages out there. Okay. We have volume weighted moving average. Okay. It used to be a very popular indicator, but it was really more popular before we got Forex and CFD trading and all this other stuff, because with stocks or commodities, you can actually get true volume. With CFDs and Forex trading, Forex trading is virtually impossible to get volume. And with CFD trading, what you're seeing is the volume of trades in that asset put through the liquidity provider, not globally, not universally. And therefore, it's an erroneous number, even though we say that it might be averaged out around what's true. But most people have moved away from this volume weighted moving average. Now we have a new type of moving average, which has actually become my personal favorite. I use it a great deal. And as much as I was mocking these developers, it's one of the things that's become available with all of this new development because it makes it easy to put it on my charts. Think about displaced moving averages. This got no change to any calculation. You still calculate your moving average, whether you're using a simple moving average or an EMA, the exact same way. And what it does, it kind of cheats. And I'll tell you how. What it does is you would take the, say, simple moving average for the last, time, last 10 time periods, add it together, divide it by 10, and drop that dot on your charts right under, current, under the current price. An EAA, displaced moving average, allows you to displace that line, that dot, and move it forward. It actually allows you to move it backward also, which I don't understand, but moving it forward several places. You're not changing any of your calculations. You're simply changing where the dot goes on the chart to draw your line. So in other words, here you have the SMA for this price, the DMA, okay, is displaced and you decide how much you want to displace, but if it's displaced by 10 time frames, or 10, 10 place displacement, all it's doing is putting that chart, that dot for that current, this current calculation, 10 periods forward on your chart. And still connecting the same line together, but what you're doing is getting something that's now in front of price. So where the next price is coming up, you already have some guidance. Let me show you this on a live chart. Uh, 
Okay, so right now we're looking on this chart. This is a Euro British pound for no other reason. This is one of my teaching charts. And we're looking at a 10 period. A 12 period. Let's stick with what we're, 10 period moving average based on the close. Okay. There it is right on our charts. No change. Now. We're going to add on to here a 10 period moving average, and I personally use an offset of three. See this offset of three? It's doing the same calculation, but now it's this turquoise line up here. Same exact line, but the line has been pulled forward by three time periods. And you'd be surprised how much different it affects your trading. And if you combine this with like moving average crossover strategies or moving average uh, moving average strategies that are based on move, uh, or strategies that are based on moving average or indicators, you'll find that it has moved it in a very unique way. It's moved it from lagging to leading and it's almost helping you predict the market. So keep in mind, the place moving average formula is the same. It's just the outcome is shifted forward. So now that we know about all of these different moving averages, how do we harness them into our actual trading? Because many invaders, investors utilize these indicators to determine what trend a security is following. For example, a currency pair could follow an uptrend or a period of rising values during a time frame. Most investors seek to identify these trends and try to profit from them. Alternatively, security may do the opposite and follow a downtrend over a period. But we can also determine whether that trend is still valid or as it started to break the trend, when it's moved above or below the moving average. So there's also indicators, such as Bollinger Bands, that uses the moving average in the center of two standard deviations and the confirmation to whether you should go short or go long or the trend is over is the breaking of that moving average. Now, however, Traders should keep in mind that when a security is rising or falling in value, there are many different ways they can try to generate returns from either its rise or descent. For example, as long as an asset is climbing in value, the best can simply buy them and obtain profits. They can also generate potential returns from depreciating securities through strategies such as shorting. Now, when you're in the market, and the trade isn't doing exactly what you say it should do or think it should do, and you're not sure whether you're doing dealing with a replacement or, repl or a reversal, whether the market is still strong or not, simple moving average will help you make that final decision. Now, it's worth noting that Forex traders with different preferences may employ moving averages of varying length. There is no rock solid moving average okay and don't try to be the guy who says well guess what i've developed this trading strategy using a 42 and a half moving average there is no big difference don't try to reinvent the wheel okay a 42 and a 43 moving average or 44 isn't going to make a big enough difference to make any difference in your trade or in your strategy or your determination so one more use of moving average is measuring the momentum of a given security or how quickly it is either ascending or descending. The whole point of determining momentum is that once an asset starts moving in a certain direction, it will likely keep going that exact same direction. And we understand trending markets. Well, if you have confirmation of the trend and can see the momentum in that move, you can trade the direction of the trend. So if Forex traders can identify the momentum of security, 
They can buy or sell the asset or even take out long or short positions on it. To single out this momentum, an investor can look at what the financial management did within the short, the medium, and the long term. In other words, a 10, 20, 30, 30, 60, 90 moving average combination. Moving averages also help give us support and resistance levels. Many Forex traders will expect securities to find support once they've reached key averages or use other indicators in order to back up their forecasts. In addition, these same investors will frequently make use of important averages to predict which currency pairs will run into resistance during their upward or downward movement. So if an investor takes the time to master the moving average and the many averages it provides, they will have access to a wide range of tools they would not be able to harness otherwise. With these implements, Forex traders can make better informed decisions and increase the chance of meeting their investment objectives. Now, as I mentioned, what period you use is really completely up to you. In theory, there are an infinite number of simple moving averages. So if you think you will produce some weird 46 SMA to beat the market, let me stop you. I already mentioned it once. It's important to use the most common SMAs. Oh, they are the ones that traders will be using regularly, and they're the ones who withstood time. Okay. Well, I do advocate you following every, I do not advocate you following everyone else. It's important to know what other traders are using and how they're using those indicators. So the most popular ones are a five period moving average. This is what we call for the hyper trader who wants something very short term. If you're looking for something that might wanna confirm an entry point to the markets, 10 is about the most popular out there. It's great for short term traders, day traders, swing traders. 20, it's about the last stop on the bus for short-term traders. 50 can help us gauge mid-term trends because when you're looking at the environmental outlook of an asset, you know you want to know whether gold for the long term is trading up because you want to know where the overall momentum is. If you're looking to trade short in a sh you're you know, looking for a short-term trade. You want to know where the overall market momentum is. So a 50 period moving average might help you with that. Some traders will try, will tell you to try simple moving average trading systems where your buy or sell or price breaks the average on the closing basis. Unfortunately, this is not accurate. Oftentimes stocks will take over or under the moving average. As I mentioned, we have something called red light, green light. So in the end, it comes down to what you feel comfortable with and what is your stock. The EMA gives you more and earlier signals, but also gives you more false and premature signals. The SMA provides you less and later signals, but it's also less wrong signals during volatile trading. So keep in mind, a nine or 10 period, a 20 or 21 period, 50 period is way off the edge. Now here you can see a combination of a 10, a 50, and a 21 period moving average. Why is it was selected that way? You could use a 10, 20, 30. You could use a 10, 20, and a 50. But when you combine three different moving averages, you get some very, very unique market information. You can see when here, when all three EMAs crossed each other. You can see here where they're really fanning out far apart. You can see when the long-term moving average moved over the shorter-term moving average. These all tell you things about price. Now, I, I will try to explain something to you that some people get confused with. Uh, it's only terminology. We call the shortest time period that you're using in a moving average, whatever you've selected, the fast moving average. We call, we call the longest period that you're using 
the slow moving average. Okay, why? If you're using a 10 period and a 30 period, the 10 period, you're gonna take the last 10 trading ranges, add it together and divide it by 10. It's gonna give you the most up-to-the-date information using the shortest period. So it's gonna react faster. If you're combining that with a 30 period moving average, so you're using the last 30 closes, adding together, it's gonna react slower to the market. So the fast moving average is always the smallest one. The longer moving average is, or the slowest moving average is always the, the longest period. And if you're using a three period moving average, then you have the medium term moving average. So in other words, in this example here, this line would be considered the slowest period moving average because this is a 50 period moving average. The yellow line is a 21 period moving average. So this would be a medium moving average. And the blue line is a 10 period and it would be the fastest moving average. And the reason I mentioned is a lot of strategies you read about will talk about fast and slow moving average because they don't tell you to use a five and a 10. They tell you to take your slow and the fast, whatever. So you need to understand what the difference is. So I just explained it. it it's just understanding the, the terms. It's terminology, that's it. But when you combine three moving averages, you get to see they will tell you some very unusual things about what price is doing and how it is trading and give you some very, very clear trading signals. So now that you know about the differences between moving average and how to choose the right settings, we can talk about the three ways you would use moving average. One is trend direction or filter. We've talked about that. Okay. Now, we don't have this anymore in our type of trading, but if you're trading the straight stock market, we have, and you read about it in the paper all the time, you always, you know, market watch, Wall Street, it's always talking about the, the stock exhibited, the golden cross or the death cross. Okay. These are explanations of when price moved above or below a moving average. So as you can see, death cross was moving down, golden cross was moving up. And lastly, it will help us with support and resistance, which we can use for our stop loss placement. Now you say, I get all that from my trends and support and resistance. Well, moving averages don't work in ranging markets. When price ranges back and forth between support and resistance, the moving average is usually somewhere in the middle of that range and price doesn't respect it that much. But when price starts moving and moving up or down, the moving average becomes a lot more reliable and it will help you find support and resistance points in the market, especially when support and resistance cross other types of support and resistance levels, basically like if you're using eyeballing, using Fibonacci's, whatever you're using, and then you get a crossover of just a standard or an exponential moving average, you get more important piece of information. And like I mentioned earlier, today, there's also indicators like Bollinger Bands that uses a center moving average that when price breaks above or below that moving average tells us something about the trend. So you can see that the moving average or moving averages are a multifaceted tool that can be used in a variety of trading ways. Once a trader understands the implications of an SMA versus an EMA and a displaced moving average and the importance of the self-fulfilling prophecy and how to pick the right period and time settings. Moving averages become a important tool in a trader's toolbox. So thank you very much for joining us tonight. I hope you did learn something. 
If you have any questions, please contact Alvexo or write them into that question box and somebody will send you an answer. Have a great trading day and have a good night now.